another service call brought to you by train. Anyway, it's going to be another XV system. And at some point, train becomes more of a hindrance than they are a help because of the hoops and the hurdles that you have to go through dealing with one of these XV systems. Any other part in this thing that I want that I know has failed and I know I'm having issues with, I can order it under warranty and go pick it up. But this drive, they think it's made out of gold. And they just, I mean, I know they don't want people just parts changing these things. I get that. But when you have a reputation with them of understanding and having a diagnosis correct, then, I mean, at some point they should, hey, okay, we'll let these guys, if they need one, let them order one. But no, they want you to replace this or replace that, then update this. And every time that doesn't work, because you know the problem is this thing, that's another inconvenience for the homeowner, because now they call you back two weeks later. It's not working. Get them tech support on the phone, okay, we'll do this, update it. We'll come out and update it. Three weeks later, doing the exact same thing. And it's, then, then okay, well now we'll go ahead and give you a number, you can order an authorization number, you can order one of these things and so this is trip number three and uh the guy that talked to the other tech that was out here told him update the drive and if that doesn't work call in and we'll uh give you an authorization for one of these things so now here we are we're back this guy's got a nice little property out here his little finding his driveway is hard it's right in between two trees off of a back road and you drive up through those woods right there and S around and come around and eventually you come up here to the front of the house and I'm sitting over there. He's got a lot of plants and stuff. You know, he's got all this Generac stuff and things. He's set up out here if something happens. And he's got solar panels up there too. I don't know. But he's got a propane tank and generator. But uh, he's trying to sell the house. They're moving to Kentucky. And this thing keeps acting up. So... Let's see what we can figure out. It says it's in standby. The thermostat, you saw the codes at the beginning. And this thing's in standby. It's in a call for cooling, but we're in a hard lockout. So, we set the hard lockout. Got two. I oh, don't know, these are solar breakers. So, where's the breaker for this thing? Probably in that panel. Over there. Over there. So, let's go see. There's my power wires right there. So running, going through this generac box right here and up into this panel. So there should be a breaker in here for, yep. And this unit does this big, this whole end of the house down here is master bedroom, master closet, master bathroom. So I'm gonna cycle the power on this thing. You gotta let it discharge for about 30 seconds until your screen goes blank. You don't just turn the breaker off and turn it back on. You have to turn the breaker off. When you hear that click, and then eventually this thing is gonna go blank. And then max normal lockout. So it's reading some funky stuff. So let's turn the breaker back on get hooked up to it it'll come back on let's see what it's doing all right guys i've got this thing running and i'm going through i'm checking all my sensors because they're going to ask those questions when i call them if you check this sensor and that sensor everything in here is reading like it's supposed to going through the alert history in it and it's got this alert right here in the history 18803 shutdown internal failure there does not clear call tech support record failure mode for warranty claim and all that blah 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 so that fault is in the history so it didn't clear when it was reset it's still there everything's running fine right now but it's these intermittent problems so we go get on the phone with tech support 
and jump through the hoops and the hurdles. So let's double check everything before we make the phone call. So come up in the attic and I got fault codes flashing here on the air handler. And then I got this system error, EVC system error control fault EVC. So let me go in here and check all my sensors. Make sure everything else in here is working. Um, These are going to be air handler faults. So maybe it's something different this time. I don't know. That's why you double check everything. So let me get this door off and we'll check these sensors. Alright, so I've got the book and my sensor chart. Put the board out there. There's our stepper motor. Up in the attic. It's not hot, hot up here. It might be. Might be in the upper 90s up here. It's about 83 or 4 outside. Sun's beating down, but uh, anyway, that's the trunk line. It's got the round duct that steps down, maintains your static and your airflow, all that good deal. Runs all the way down, all the way down there. No, you can't see it because it's dark, but I ain't walking down there for you. So I'm up here double checking this. Because they're going to ask questions when you call. And you better have the answers. You don't want to have to come back up here and do that. But one thing I like about these TAM air handlers. You set the thermostat back to off. But turn the fan on. It's a positive air, air handler. So that blower is running at about 50%. This is a what, two ton unit I think. So it's running about 400 CFM in circulation mode. And it's taking that house air from in there. And blowing it right out here on me. So I'm sitting in a 100 degree attic. But I've got. 73 degree air blowing on me from inside the house think about little things like that guys if i'm in an attic working on a case coil on a furnace i turn everything off i set the fan on at the thermostat when i get that coil i'm changing a coil in a case coil in the attic you get the door off that house there is going to blow on you keep your cool obviously when you go to braze it in you got to turn that off for a minute when you get done turn it back on keep yourself cool so this is what we have on our coil sensor. Orange, orange. About 1.7. Black to black. 1.8. That's pretty close. 1.7 and 1.8, according to our paperwork, is going to be about 63, 62 degrees. So both those numbers are close. Pretty sure that's going to be okay. That coil is still cold from where the system was running a few minutes ago. It would take it a while for it to actually balance out to the, the same temperature. So let's on out the stepper motor real quick. Stick our lead in the little plug there. Find the right hole. And then we'll just go against all the other colors. Make sure I've got bones. So I got 45 there, 44 there, 45.8 there, 45.8. These two 44s. <coughs> bug me a little bit but they're usually okay when they're like that usually when i find one of these bads i just end up finding an open winding in there somewhere so let's put that back together that should be good and at this point we'll try clearing and it could be a case where somebody last time somebody was here they didn't clear the fault codes is they will stay some of them you gotta you're supposed to short the open and test pins together for like 10 seconds to clear the fault codes <laughs> see if that works and there's a test button you can hold down as well so my light my red light has stopped flashing and then my 5.3 fault code is cleared my stepper motor is good. 
my temperature sensor is good so this thing in cooling mode should be ranging because it uses these two sensors in this motor to control the refrigerant flow obviously in cooling and then there's a set on the outdoor unit for heat mode but that variable speed system still constantly monitors what's going on inside and outside when it's running so anyway, I'll get these wires back in there and we'll get the door back on and reset the power and go outside and uh, wait for this thing to come on all right guys got this thing back on and running still getting that internal error fault but i'm gonna you know the reason that maybe that's the problem but uh the main reason i went upstairs and checked that stuff is you see that sub cooling starting to climb sub cooling on this unit is 10. i had it up to 20 before we went in the house and it's up to 14 now I, I don't know how it was suddenly after seven years shoot at seven years old be overcharged There's no record of adding refrigerant we haven't done a coil or any kind of repair like that on it um, all my sensors are reading correct my stepper motors are operating correct but uh probably going to take a little refrigerant out of it just just to check to see if it's overcharged but that doesn't explain this fault error and everything that controls the refrigerant flow in this thing is testing proper so maybe somebody was thinking something and stuck a little bit in it not you know understanding it I don't know but I'm going to back some of it and see if I can bring this subcooling down. But i got to get with tech support on this drive. Um, why it keeps giving that internal fault failure. I've reset it twice. It's not clearing. So, anyway. That's going to be 30 minutes on the phone trying to get through to them and then going through everything. So, thinking about retiring, guys. Thinking about it semi. Not completely, but uh, I don't know, guys. Should I work at Lowe's or Home Depot? Alright guys, I am back. I have put that drive in. Like I said right there, it's assembled. It don't tell you where it's made at. This tells you it got shipped to the USA and probably assembled and installed in Tyler, Texas, obviously. I don't know where it was made at. Hungary, Malaysia, Korea, Vietnam, I don't know. Somewhere over there. Not anywhere in the continental, I'm sure. But anyway, I also went ahead because remember I had when I finally finished with that thing running, this thing was running like a 21 subcool and a 20 superheat and a 424 head pressure with a 120 suction. You see what it's doing now. So I just decided to go ahead and swap out that EEV control and the air handler. I went up there and did that and that problem has gone away. And she's draining plenty of water always a good sign my internal drive fault has gone away i've got it in test mode this thing's running this is a two ton it's running at 100 percent right now and she's just as quiet as can be i can sit here and whisper to you it's how quiet these units are if it wasn't for some of the electronical issues but when these things run now he's got the thermostat set at 67 degrees in there and it's like 80 uh, well, in the shade it's 85 it's actually 90 if you walk over there but um so we're doing a 16 superheat and 8 sub cool this thing requires a 10 I am hooked up just in case I need to adjust the charge it's in check charge cooling mode You've got about 8 more minutes for it to stabilize you put it in test mode put it in charge mode cooling it'll run this thing at 100% you're supposed to wait 20 minutes for it to stabilize before you adjust the charge on it and I'm just hooked directly to my true suction. There's no reason for me to put a charging tee on here. I just hook up right there. Obviously, I've bled my hose with the refrigerant before I connected it. So, we'll see where this stabilizes out at. But it's looking good to me. That 308 is looking a lot better than 3 or 424 and a 21 subcool. So, not only do we have a problem with this drive, we had a problem up there with... Uh, the controls in the air handle are regulating the superheat and the subcooling and the refrigerant flow. Um, 
the stepper motor that's in the air handler was testing good the temperature sensors were all testing good so i assumed it was more than likely going to be a problem with the eev control that all this stuff is plugged to up there and how it was operating the stepper motor did the open and close test on it all that work so there's a lot you got to look at when you're working on these and he does still have his home warranty and like i said they he calls they come out and they send you know warranty tech heating and air llc comes out here and hooks up to it and then oh yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't run it in test mode so he's running it at the thermostat doesn't pay attention to whether or not it's running at full speed which it needs to be running at full speed to do a complete proper evaluation on it and then it may be running at 35 percent which your pressure is going to look a lot different oh this thing's low on charge and of course starts gagging freon into it and then you know because we all know that's the answer if you can't figure out what's wrong just add some freon to it that'll fix it uh they don't have any clue what they're looking at but anyway i'm gonna let this stabilize out and let it run and uh there's books typically in the door with these units that give you instructions you can go on fieldtechhelp.com with train and watch videos on this equipment how to troubleshoot your fault codes that it's giving you the fault code list how to check your sensors all those things just take the time to look up on it if you're not seeing them all the time i can understand it yeah i might run into one of these every every year or two okay i got you um but you know reference it learn about it and you know because there's some things out there that, that you can really turn into a mess if you don't know what you're looking at and working on so uh, you can make things a lot worse than they were before you got there so have a little pride when it comes to that and you know you don't have to memorize every book but at least be able to pull it up on these new fangled phones that we've got that i didn't have when i started you just had to figure things out when i started so google it find a book read some information on it take a few minutes see what's going on anyway guys this thing is straightened out we're running about an eight sub coolant i might adjust it just a hair um super heats at 12 123 over 310 which is right pretty much almost on the money appreciate you watching guys like subscribe and uh we'll see you on the next one